Good morning. Jesus is on trial and none of the witnesses agree. When all these lies against him cannot succeed, then how is it that they convict Jesus? Let's read it. It's in Mark 14, verse 60 to 65. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Do you answer nothing? What is it that these men testify against you? But he kept silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him, saying to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need do we have of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? And they all condemned him to be deserving of death. Then some began to spit on him and to blindfold him and to beat him and to say to him, Prophesy, prophesy. And the officers struck him with the palms of their hands. So we saw yesterday morning, the council listened for hours to this false testimony against Jesus, and yet nothing matched. Here's what I believe. It would have sent the wrong message to the universe for Jesus to be convicted on some trumped-up charges over here, some fakery over here. That, that wouldn't have done the thing that God wanted to at least come out of this. It doesn't help us understand truth that much if Jesus is convicted on some set of lies or a half lie. That, that's not really that useful. It must be seen by all the watching universe that, that Satan's lies were full lies, that, that, that truth and error, that there's no place where they meet together. And so it had to be seen a, a full, full revelation here of exactly what was going on in this, in this particular point. Jesus must be convicted not, of, not on the basis of a lie, but on the basis of truth. And so the priests, after all this, they come to this point of very great frustration. Nothing's coming together. They've been at it for hours. They, they're determined. They're just in a frenzy to get Jesus. And finally, the high priest asks the question, Are you the Son of God? And Jesus answers at last. At last, after hours, he didn't say anything. But now he says, I am. Oh, that must have enraged them. They just must have turned purple with rage at that point. And, tore, you know, they tore their clothes, and, and that was violation of commandments. But anyway, uh, and so now they torture him and condemn him for blasphemy. And by the way, when they say blasphemy, what's going on here? Well, blasphemy, of course, means to put oneself in the place of God or to claim to be God. So in Jesus' case, it, it wasn't blasphemy because he was God. But this is the ultimate black and white, 180-degree opposite uh, opposite place that this could go. And this was very important for the universe to see. So Jesus was telling the truth and he was condemned uh, in, in this, uh, on this total 100% perfect lie. It was, it was as pure of a lie as it can be that this is just a man. He's not God. No, he was a man and he, and he was God. And so here we have it. And that's why I believe that all the false witnesses couldn't agree because it was in God's uh, eternal purpose that Jesus would be convicted after he told the truth, not on the basis of a bunch of lies. This was truth versus error, and now we have it face to face, and they choose the lie. There it is. This was the most clarifying charge that could be made, that Jesus was not God, and so that's what we have here. And this is where we are in the story of Jesus right now. Boy, we're almost to the cross. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that he was a truth teller. And thank you, Lord, that he was God come to you and is God, has never not been God. And he came to earth and lived and died for us. Oh, Lord, thank you for the salvation that we can have through Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, Go out into the day today knowing that you serve, you serve the God of heaven. You serve God himself. God come in human flesh. Jesus is yours and my Savior. There's no better thing we can have, no better outlook we can have as we start this day. God be with you.